Let's learn how to create this procedural cartoon flame effect in Blender EV. Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Toffee. Toff? On your blanket. Good girl. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome to this Blender tutorial where we're going to recreate this procedural cartoon flame effect using just a couple of objects and some simple materials. So let's just jump right into it. I've already gone ahead and created the torch that I'm going to be putting my flame on. If you want to see how I created this style of artwork, you can check out my mushroom video on TipTut for a nice long detailed explanation or my short shield video for a very quick tutorial over on my other channel, Blenderbox. So let's just jump right in. First things first, let's make sure we've got our render settings set up correct. We're going to be in Render Engine Eevee and we need Ambient Occlusion and Bloom turned on. We also would prefer to have soft shadows when we create our lighting later on for this scene. Apart from that though, that's all that you need to set up. So let's go ahead and create our flame. I'm going to do this using a Icosphere. So Shift A, a new Icosphere. Let's just pop into solid view to make our life a little bit easier. And I'm just going to scale down this Icosphere and bring it upwards so it's at the top of my torch. That looks about right to me. Let's press Control A and apply that scale. Tabbing into edit mode, I'm just going to turn this into a bit of a teardrop shape. To do that, I'm going to come up and turn on proportional editing up here or clicking O is your shortcut on the keyboard. And then in edge or face select mode, I'm just going to select these top faces by shift clicking like this. Then we'll press G for move and you can see this circle. Let's scroll so that it fits just roughly the same size as our sphere here. And we're just going to bring that up a little bit. Let's do the same thing again, but this time make it smaller by scaling down. That seems roughly about correct to me. It doesn't need to be anything too detailed. So let's just tab back into object mode and we're going to go to our modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface to smooth this out a little bit. Let's put it on three and let's right click and choose shade smooth. Okay. Now we have this basic flame shape. We're going to add some rippling to it. Let's add a displacement modifier and we'll call this flame ripple. And under your texture properties for that displacement modifier, we want to change from image or movie to Voronoi, which is going to look pretty crazy, but don't worry, we're going to control this. Let's go down to our contrast and adjust that to say about 0.3. So you get this nice, wompy, lovely, 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 <laughs> nice, lumpy, wobbly effect is what I was trying to say. And let's just decrease the size or sorry, increase the size until we get something that is basically just wobbling our shape a little bit more. Let's try around 0.5. So you can now see we've got this kind of warped shape. What we actually want to do is force this Voronoi to move up over time so that it makes our flame object ripple. And the best way to do that is actually to tie the coordinates of your flame displace to an object. So we go down to here and choose coordinates object. And we now need to just come in and press Shift S and move the cursor to the world origin. Then Shift A and add in a new empty plane axis. And we'll call this Flame Driver. Now, back on your uh, flame object, let's eyedropper our flame driver. So now the Voronoi is based on the position of this object. So if I move this object up, we're going to get these ripples through our flame, which is really nice. OK, so we don't want to have to animate that ourselves. So we're going to put a driver on it by going to our object properties. And on the Z location, we're going to type in um, hash frame. So every time the frame advances, move this by one. So if we did that, you'll notice that our uh, object shoots off into the sky really fast, probably too fast, to be fair. So if we do divide it by 10, that's just forward slash 10. That's going to slow it down to a more realistic speed. Now we're going to be coming back to this later, but that will do for now to start our flame object. The rest of this technique is just done in the materials. So let's go to the materials tab and we will add a new material. So let's go to the shading tab. And in the shading tab here, we want to make sure we're on material preview mode. Now let's add a new material and we'll call this one flame red. What we need for this material is to firstly delete our principled BSDF and replace it with an emission shader. So shift A and type in emission and just connect that directly to your surface. From there, we want to add a Voronoi object that's going to basically create a mask and turn this into a black and white effect that we can then make transparent. So shift A and type in Voronoi and we want to add a Voronoi texture. This Voronoi needs to go into a color ramp. 
So we connect the distance of that into the factor and the color of that into the emission. And as you can see, that just creates this black through to white lumpiness over our flame. Now, in order to control and make this harsher, a all black or all white, because we've got gradients at the moment, we actually want to put that into a second color ramp that we set to constant. And then adjusting this first slider basically controls the size of these dots. And if we adjust this slider here, you'll start to see this controls the amount of dots that we let through into our flame. Let's add a uh, mapping node to our Voronoi by pressing Ctrl and T to bring up a mapping and texture coordinate. If that shortcut doesn't work for you, try going to your Edit, Preferences. Under Add-ons, type in Node and make sure that Node Wrangler is uh, selected. Click Refresh and then selecting your Voronoi texture and pressing Ctrl T will add in your mapping and your texture coordinate nodes. Let's increase the scale of this Voronoi texture, which actually decreases the dots, <laughs> uh, to about eight so that we get this nice small dot pattern here. And now it's time to turn this into a transparent material. So we're going to add a transparency node. Just type in transparent, so transparent BSDF. And we want to mix that with our emission node that currently has our dots on it. So we're going to shift A in a new mix shader. And we'll drop that between emission and material output. And we'll connect the transparent BSDF into the second slot of that shader. The last thing is under your material properties tab, you need to go to the blend mode of your uh, material and set to alpha clip. This will then make your material transparent. You do need to disconnect your color of your color ramp from your emission and put that into the factor of the mix shader in order to just retain the white. But we actually want to subtract the white, so we're going to invert that by Shift A and adding an invert node, okay? And that's just gonna give us these um, white sections that are gonna be our flame and the black sections are now gonna be the missing part that we subtract from our flame. Now, this is a good amount of these, these kind of sized circles, but we actually want some smaller ones and some larger ones as well to create the smaller particles and larger particles for our fire. So I'm actually going to take my mapping Voronoi and color ramp nodes, and I'm just gonna duplicate them by pressing Shift D and move them above our other nodes here. Now, at this point, it's good to separate your texture coordinates over to the left, and we're gonna shift A in a new frame node. This is just for housekeeping. You don't need to do this step. We're gonna take this mapping Voronoi and color ramp that's already connected and drag it over the frame node to basically put those in a box. Then we're just going to select our frame node and press N, and that brings up our frame details over here, and we can just give this a label of main flame details. And this just helps keep our node system nice and clean. So at a glance, we can see what's going on. Now let's take this mapping Voronoi and color ramp, and we're going to take the same generated texture coordinates and pop that into the vector. And we're going to take the same color ramp, and we're going to mix that with the first color ramp in order to uh, add some smaller details. So let's add in a new mix RGB shader. So not a mix shader, a mix RGB shader. And we'll set this mix RGB shader to soft light. We want to connect the color of this color ramp into the factor one of the soft light here and connect the main flame details into color two. Disconnect that from the color ramp and then connect the soft light up to the color ramp. So we've got both of those being mixed into our flame. Doesn't look any different at the moment, but if we increase the scale, we can see, let's just double it to 16. We can see now that we started adding some smaller circles to our flames as well. And all of this will be editable later on, so you can tweak it to your heart's content. Let's add in another frame and pop those three inside it, and we will call this frame Small Flame Details. Now, that's looking pretty good, but we want some overarching larger flames as well. So I'm gonna select these guys here and Shift D them. It's gonna keep them inside the same group, but if you press Alt and P, that will separate them from the parents. And we can connect the generated up to the vector here. Let's add in another frame node, again, just to keep things neat. And we can call this one large flame details. Let's add another mix RGB node in order to mix these two together. And you guessed it. We now need to mix our large flame details with the output of our first soft light shader. So disconnect that from the color ramp, pop that into slot two of our mix shader and this into slot one of our mix shader and then connect this mix shader up to this factor here and turn that to soft light as well. 
This time we're going to half our original value of eight down to four and we get some large lumps out of that. Now our lumps here are looking a little bit clumped together and that's because I made the mistake of putting these into the wrong factors. We're actually going to crank these factors all the way up to one so that we're getting the full mix of the soft light and we're actually going to swap these around by just dragging from color one to color two and you'll see that your flames sort of spread out a little bit better. Now that's looking quite nice but of course at the moment it's all very static. What we need is this Voronoi texture to be animating upwards so these dots move to the top of your flame here. To do that, we're going to add some drivers in a similar way to that we did to the Voronoi displacement that we added to our icosphere earlier. Now, down here on the mapping, let's start with our main frame details. On the Z axis, you'll see that you can start pushing your frame upwards in space. So let's go to here and type hash frame divided by one and see how that works. So as you see, that's moving very fast. So let's try like 100 to see how slowly it's moving. Looking good, but it's moving in the wrong direction downwards. So we just need to uh, flip that by doing frame divided by negative 100, and you'll see the flame starting to move up. 100 is terribly slow though, so let's try something like 30. That's looking much nicer. Now on our smaller details, they would move faster because they're like the, the, the smaller, lighter flicks of flame coming off. So for on that one, let's do hashtag frame divided by negative 60 to double that up. And that's moving really nicely upwards now. On our larger ones, let's do something a little bit slower. Frame negative 20. That's looking pretty nice. So we've got some movement in our flame now, but as you can see, what we really want is it to peter out at the top so it's thicker at the bottom. Now to do that, we basically need to map another gradient that goes from white down here to black at the top of the flame. So let's add in a shift A gradient texture. And we're going to mix that gradient texture with our original main flame details. Let's add in another mix RGB node, this time leaving it on mix. And we will go from our gradient texture into color one, color ramp out of our main flames go into color two. And then we disconnect this color and connect our mix shader into color one. And as you can see now, if you rotate around your flame, you can see that we have half of our flame is nearly very solid and half of our frame is less solid here, but it's at the wrong angle. So here is white and here is black. So we just need to rotate that now. To do that, we take our gradient texture, press Control T to add a mapping node to it and rotate your rotation values until you find the correct one. Y is going to be it. So if I put this at 90 degrees, you can see that we have now a reverse frame. So we obviously need to go to negative 90 degrees to put that on the bottom. When we do, however, you'll see that we only get the very tip of the flame and that's because it's actually down here somewhere. And if you adjust your X location, you will start to see your flame rise. I found for this default size around one meter works, but obviously yours is going to be affected by the size of your object. Last thing, let's put these in a frame node. So at this point, you can just play with your values to adjust the size and things like that of your flame. You'll find that adjusting this end color ramp here will increase or decrease the thickness of the flame. So you can have some very light flame or rather some blooming flame like so. Of course, affecting these color ramps here will affect the details specific to those sizes. So you can increase or decrease the amount of gaps from your small, large or standard flame details. So just play with those sliders until you get something you like. And of course, affecting the scale and the speed of your uh, flame details will affect those accordingly. Let's add a little color to our flame then. Let's go down here to our emission shader at the very start and let's just grab a nice dark red. Now, as you can see, it's not really emitting much at the moment. If we go to rendered preview, you'll see that we're not actually getting much bloom. And that's because you just need to increase the strength of your flame. Doing so will change the um, color of your light due to the soft light nature of our blenders. So it's best to set the strength of the emission that you'd like and then just tweak the color of your flame until you are happy. So I'm going to bring in some more of the red there by just moving that back around. OK, so let's go back to layout mode for a moment and go to render preview. And I'm just going to duplicate this object with shift D, right click to release it. And we're just going to scale it down a little bit. We're also going to rotate it on the Z axis so that we get a different angle of flames. Then back under the shading tab, we're going to duplicate our flame red material and call this flame orange. Then we can take this emission here and change it to something orange. Now, of course, you could put all of this preceding bit here 
into a group so you don't need to reuse it. But what I like to do is come in and just change some of these values ever so slightly so that you're not getting something that's exactly the same. That creates a little bit more of a natural feeling to your flames because they are all slightly different. So back in the layout tab then, let's just take this red flame and scale it down so that it's inside our yellow. And we'll just name that flame red. Let's take uh, this yellow and actually call it flame orange because we're going to do something brighter. And we'll scale that up a little bit. Let's duplicate that again with shift D, right click to release, scale it up, R and Z to rotate it a bit. And let's call this one flame yellow. But as you can see, this is very thick for the outside. So back in our shading tab, we're going to duplicate this effect, call it flame yellow. We're going to take a yellow color and we're just going to increase this slider so that we just get the very bottom of our flame. Let's do this one more time, flame yellow. We can stay in, in shading view for this. Shift D to duplicate it, scale it up just a little bit. And we'll call this flame white. We'll duplicate this again, call the material flame white. And we'll really just stretch that out. Let's add in some really blight, blight, bright flames on the edge there. And we'll just crank that so we get just the very edge of the sparks coming off of it like so. Now, I don't want those at the bottom, I want them at the top. So I'm just gonna rotate on this version back to 90 degrees like so. And I'm just gonna push my X value up a little bit further until we get them just at the tip. And here you can see we now have our procedural cartoon flames, which look pretty damn good if I do say so myself. The last step I found then, and this is just particular to my shading technique for this, is that if I add a little light into my scene, I can wiggle that light around so that it affects my shading. So I'm just gonna add some drivers to the object properties of this light to make it wiggle. To do that, let's tie it to a null object. So shift A, new empty plane axis, and we'll call this light wiggle. And I will take my light wiggle and my point light, and I'm just gonna parent those together so that the light follows the null object. And to make this light wiggle, we're just going to, into our location X, we're going to type an expression, sign, open parentheses, frame times by 0.5 times by 60. And what this essentially does is create a sine wave that will wiggle based on those factors over time, back and forth a little bit. If you want more details on that, you can see them over on my Blender Box channel where I've created a video specifically on this. But essentially, I'm just gonna variate these slightly for each axis uh, so that we've got a wiggling light so that the light plays on the shadows of my frame there. So that is it, a procedural cartoon flame effect. Looking pretty good if I do say so myself. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to leave a comment so I know what you want to see next here on the channel. And hopefully I'll see you all next time on TipTut. Massive thank yous to my level two and above members without whom TipTut would not be possible. You guys are so bloody lovely. I can't help it. I just want to squeeze you. You're so lovely. <laughs>